Hello everyone, what's up and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna to share with you some easy pantry meal ideas that will cost you $1.50 or less per meal. like me you might have some random bits and bobs in your pantry that need used up and I'm gonna share with you some great meal ideas that I am using to save some money in my grocery budget I like to do this about once a month once every other month and I feel like we all have those little odds and ends so hopefully this video will be helpful for you if you're not looking to use up the odds and ends you'll have a couple great new recipe ideas to share with you and your family so let's get started first we're going to pressure cook some beans we all know how to do that but in case you don't I will link a recipe down in the description box for you from Pinterest it's super easy highly recommend doing so if you are someone who enjoys a lot of beans every single week it's super cost efficient and saves you a ton of money to cook your own plus someone recently told me to store them after they've been cooked in like a one cup serving which I've been doing and loving so I just have to pull out one serving at a time in my freezer okay enough chatting let's get started on this first meal which is a creamy white bean soup all of the ingredients are super easy to come by and the soup is going to be so delicious I can't wait to enjoy this for lunch today okay the first thing I'm gonna do is actually make some beans this is kind of like my little pantry stock if you will I also have a ingredient like what I'm making anyways I have about a pound of white beans I think these are great northern but they're gonna work great for this recipe I'm gonna make all of them and then put what I don't use into the freezer, but half of these will be used for this first recipe. Okay, so along with those white beans that are cooking right now in my pressure cooker, we're gonna actually make a white bean, like it's called a creamy potato soup. I'll link the recipe from Pinterest down below. Instead of doing an onion, celery, everything, I have this in my freezer and I need to use it up. I feel like it's been in there for forever. So de technically not a pantry staple, but definitely something I wanna use up. And again, it saves me money in my grocery budget because I'm using something I already have. Uh, some tomatoes. I always have these on hand. I like to always have a couple of them so I can make different and new recipes. Some leftover Yukon potatoes, a couple of carrots that are rolling around in my crisper, some garlic. This is going to be so delicious. Spoiler alert, the soup is amazing. I did say in my intro we were going to have it for lunch this day, but I let it simmer for longer to really bring out all the burst of flavor, so we end up having it for dinner. I am estimating this to be five servings, but I really hesitate sometimes in, you know, serving sizes in general because we all have unique to us needs. For me, example, some days I'm really, really hungry depending on how much activity I did the day before, and then some days you know what, I'm just not super hungry, I don't know what it is, but I listen to my body. So even my personal serving sizes fluctuate. So the serving sizes and the cost I'm gonna give you at the end for price per meal, obviously prices are different all over the US, all over the world, but it kind of gives you an idea of the breakdown on how inexpensive things can be, especially if you're in a pinch right now. I feel like 2020 really set us all off into this like, it's it just a really a hardship for many of us. And then it just had, we haven't been able to breathe or catch up. There's so much going on. So my whole idea behind, you know, putting prices and servings is just to give you a general idea. I mean, if you ate this whole pot of soup, it really would only cost you a couple of dollars, but it's really delicious. Let it simmer for a couple hours. If you don't have the seasonings I have on hand, use whatever you have talking to a girl that used salt and garlic for like a year and a half. So if you don't have any seasonings, it's okay. Let your food taste just like food.
polenta I have had in my pantry for a really long time, and I just don't know what to do with it. So today we're gonna use it up. This will give you, I guess, an idea if you have some on hand. I don't use it that frequently. I will list, I will link a video down below of a recipe I did for a salad where I use this for croutons, and I think that's the only time I've ever used it. But I like to use it, I just don't know what to use it for. So let me know what you guys use it for. But I'm gonna roast this, I guess, or fry it in a pan. You'll see what I'm gonna do with this here in a second, but we're also gonna make a homemade ketchup. I found it recipe on Pinterest and I was super excited because I was like, you know what, I've never done this before and it's super inexpensive. We have some white distilled vinegar, water, brown sugar, tomato paste, salt, garlic, and onion powder. And we're just gonna bring that to a simmer and we'll have homemade ketchup. Many of you have made your own homemade ketchup before. I put this on medium heat and just kind of stirred it around a little bit. My brown sugar had gotten hard. I did not know that the bag it was stored in uh, did not get zipped the last time it was used, but oh well, it's okay. It still works. There's also a hack. You can put it in like a container, like a seal container with a piece of bread and it'll soften up in 24 hours, but oh my gosh, I'm never buying store-bought ketchup again. This is a really thick decadent ketchup it reminds me of the ketchup we used to always have at a restaurant in columbus ohio so i'm pretty convinced that theirs was homemade just like this to a tea tastes the exact same if you want it to be thinner you obviously could add more vinegar or more water but i highly recommend if you have not made your own ketchup don't wait on it like i did make it right away so polenta i believe is cornmeal correct me if i'm wrong i really like it i just don't know what to do with it i feel like cornmeal in general which you're actually gonna see a recipe with cornmeal in a minute. I feel like I can figure out what to do with it. I can make cornbread, I can um, make chili and then put cornbread on top. You'll see another recipe that is amazing, but I feel like I can figure out what to do with it with polenta. I buy it with good intention, and then I just feel like it stares at me in my pantry. So I put this in a hot, hot, hot skillet for about three minutes each side until they're nice and crunchy and they're nice and creamy in the inside. And then I had this with ketchup. Now I would have this as two servings and add a can of green beans with it. So it brings it out to $1.50 per serving and that's including the ketchup. So I feel like that's really good. Maybe that's not your kind of meal, but that's my kind of meal. I have my starch, my veggie and my ketchup. I'm in heaven. Almost has like a chicken nugget vibe. I know that's weird because it's not a chicken nugget, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. I wanted to share with you really quickly what I did with the extra beans. I put them in Ziploc baggies. I personally don't have a problem using Ziplocs because when I use them at home, I tend to rinse them and reuse them. I find them super convenient for me. If you choose to use like glass or Tupperware, that's completely up to you. So I do put my beans in semi-drained. I did four one cup servings and then I will write the date on them, pop them in my freezer and use them in the weeks and months to come. Okay, so I'm actually gonna make a cornbread pancake. I got this recipe on Pinterest and I have almost all the ingredients plus substitutes because I have to kind of make it vegan. So this is a great recipe if you have some cornmeal to use up. You are gonna need a little bit of flour too, but I don't have as much flour as the recipe calls for and I think it'll be just fine. I'm actually gonna double the batch because it uses all my corn flour. So I can get rid of that little bit and I'll obviously repurchase it, but I like being able to get rid of it. Now it does call for one cup of flour. As you can see, I don't quite have a full cup, but that's okay. You make do. It also 
calls for a quarter cup of sugar, which I also don't have. I have a little less than that, but it's okay. This is the egg substitute that I am using. I don't obviously cook with eggs, and this works pretty well in most baked goods, so I would highly recommend grabbing it. You can also use applesauce, but if you want kind of that really like squishy-like texture, I highly recommend grabbing it. It's pretty inexpensive. You can get it on Amazon. I can link it down below for you, or look at your local supermarket. They usually have it too. Okay, so as far as milk goes, I obviously don't have real milk. I have coconut milk here, and it is like the full fat version, I guess, because it's the 80 calories versus the 45, which I normally buy, but it's all the store had in stock. So to make buttermilk, you can use white vinegar or even an apple cider vinegar, and it'll kind of give that same resemblance, and you're gonna need about two tablespoons. and then this will be your buttermilk mixture. all mixed up I'm gonna let it kind of sit a little bit just like I would pancake mix and then I'll get a hot skillet going and then we'll make some cornbread pancakes I also feel like this would be really good if you had like jalapenos to add to it or maybe some vegan cheese but you could also go a sweet route too and add jam to the top of them which would also be amazing so you could even do 50 50 if you wanted let me know in the comments below if you've made cornbread pancakes before because other pancakes are now dead to me they're so delicious. I've never made them. I'm pretty sure I've had them before with like a cinnamon butter on the top. We're talking like 15, 16, 17 years ago in college. I'm pretty sure I'd had them and I was like, meh, but these were so good. And then I dug around in my freezer. You'll see in a little bit, I'll share with you. I found about a cup of frozen strawberries and my whole goal with this video was to make a few meals to share with you guys that I am using up ingredients I have, whether it's like little tidbits, little things that, you know, like those beans, they've been in my pantry for a long time. They need to get used up. I don't like letting things sit and it really makes room in my grocery budget for, you know, saving money, but also then I can spend a little bit more on other weeks if I want to, because I'm using up things I have on hand. I don't do a lot of food storage, a lot of you might, I personally don't. I like to use what I have and this is a great way to do so. To go along with the pancakes that I'm finishing up, which by the way, this is gonna make 12 really good sized pancakes. I have about a cup of frozen strawberries left over in my freezer and I thought, you know what? I can make like a really quick compote. So I'm gonna add these and about a cup of water to a hot skillet and a little bit of cornstarch and then we'll have something to top some of the pancakes with. Another additive to this jam or compote, whatever you want to call it, would be great. Maple syrup, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of sugar. I did add a little bit of brown sugar because that's all I had on hand, about two tablespoons, and it was perfect. Add the cornstarch slurry in there, and I let it sit until it was nice and thick. Once it cooled down just a hair, it was perfection. We used to make, well, I say we, but me, I used to make some kind of homemade jam almost every single week and this makes me want to get back into it it's so delicious okay this made 12 beautiful pancakes i would say a serving's two pancakes let's just go with that you can obviously do mathematics based on your grocery cost how many servings you're going to make but it did make 12 really good pancakes and we're actually going to enjoy these for lunch and then have the soup for dinner but I also made this like strawberry compote. It's really nice and thick. It's the longer it sits and kind of cools a little bit, the thicker it'll get. This probably cost me about 50 cents to make and that'll be the topping for the pancake. As 
always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that it inspired you to use a few things up in your pantry to save you a little bit of money or to try a new meal. Make sure you check out the recipes that are typed in the description box below. And of course, leave me a big thumbs up if you like these pantry style videos. Have an awesome day. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.